Commission of UN Watch, Ambassador Alfred H. Moses. Uh, the work that the Geneva Summit does for the past seven years in giving a platform to voices and victims around the world uh, has been the result of uh, the guidance uh, and inspiration and vision of Ambassador Alfred Moses, who from the day one when I started at UN Watch said, go out there, speak, and call things out as they are. It's gotten, gotten us into a lot of trouble at the United Nations, needless to say, but uh, it's thanks to Alfred that we're here today. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you, Hillel. What Hillel didn't tell you was that that was a while back uh, when many of the people here, including our most recent honoree, weren't attending human rights conferences. But we made progress. The past year was not a year of progress. It was a year of horror. Let me repeat, a year of horror. And no victim of that horror caught the public's attention quite like Raif Badawi, who cannot be here because he's in prison in Riyadh. He has been sentenced to a thousand lashes, 50 a week for 20 weeks. He was caned in a public square in Saudi Arabia in January. He has not been caned since because his health is such that if he were caned again, he might not survive. His wife is not here. She's in Canada with young children. What we have is a barbaric attack upon someone whose act was one of calling for open discussion a call for expression of liberalism, simply to debate, explain, and educate people as to what choices there are, and to extol the virtues of respect for the individual and a process which is an anathema to the government of Saudi Arabia. As you all know, Saudi Arabia is a member of the Human Rights Council, and as a member of the Human Rights Council, it is obligated to uphold human rights, but they're only words. Indeed, Saudi Arabia does not uphold human rights, not on behalf of women. We heard a little bit about that a few moments ago. Not on behalf of those who do not adhere to the Wahhabi view of Islam. The progeny of that extremism is visited in Nigeria, is visited in Syria, is visited in Iraq. And unless the Muslim world and Islam as an ideology and religion understands the futility of the denial of human rights, we'll be back here again lamenting the horrors that have been visited upon persons who should be free, should be able to express their views, hold their heads high, and stand for what is essential for all of us, human dignity. No ideology and no religion no state actor has the right to deny that fundamental human right, not in the name of a religion, not in the name of the state. And that is the great battle that is going on. Who will survive that battle? What ideology will have to take second place to human freedom? We don't know today. But if we're not vigilant in that struggle, we know the outcome will not be the outcome that we seek. We are not truly witnesses. People you have heard from today are the real witnesses. They are the sufferers. We are only those who come here to acknowledge that others are far braver than we and are deserving not only of our recognition but of our adulation. For they are the true heroes. We are only those who come to applaud their courage. And so it is that this year we give the Geneva Human Rights Summit Award for Courage to a gentleman who cannot be here, Raif Adalwe. We're going to give it in the name of Raif. We're going to give it to his close friend and associate who is here with us today. She's representing him 
and the family. We'd like to ask Dr. Lahom Mania to come up, please. Thank you very much. We stand united in our humanity. Your precious courage prize, which I gratefully and cordially accept on behalf of Raif Bedawi, is telling us just that. You don't know how much this prize means to this fight for freedom or to those men and women who are standing for their basic human rights in the face of tyranny and human rights violations. Your prize tells us that we're not divided by culture, religion, race, gender, or color. No, it tells us that we are united. United in our humanity, united in our unequivocal commitment to and defense of universal human rights. It tells these brave men and women that they don't stand alone in their fight for their basic human rights. They don't stand alone. We stand together. Raif Badawi belongs to this category of brave activists. In fact, I consider him one of the bravest. When a judge told him that he should repent and apologize for what the judge called or described as his crimes or otherwise face consequences, Raif Kalmi responded, I did not commit a crime to repent or to apologize for. The consequence the judge meant at the time was the death penalty for apostasy. But he said, Raif said, he said, I did not commit a crime to repent or to apologize for. It was a simple but fateful sentence. One made of pure belief in his and his fellow citizens' right to freedom of expression, opinion, and belief. These are not abstract ideas we talk about behind closed doors in conference rooms, their absence in our society, in any society, turns the lives of citizens into a living hell. And Raif understood this. He also understood something that we sometimes tend to forget. What he's fighting for is a right, a basic universal human right. We are entitled to it. It is not a gift, it is not a grant that the state can give or withhold as it wishes. And because of that, Raif Badawi is a symbol. A symbol for all those imprisoned in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the MENA region because they dared to express their opinion, to exercise their right to freedom of thought, religion, and political association. And a symbol for all those demanding their basic human rights peacefully. He stands for Walid Abu Khair, his lawyer, imprisoned to 15 years for doing nothing but his job, for demanding political reform. He stands for Muhammad Rashid Al Ajami, a poet sentenced in Qatar for 15 years for writing a poem, 15 years for a poem. He stands for Shayma Al Sabbah, 
who was shot in her back in Egypt while protesting peacefully. He stands for all of them. We meet here today across the street from the United Nations Human Rights Council. Saudi Arabia was elected last year to this council and it pledged to live up to the highest standards of human rights. I respectfully wish to ask, why does the Saudi government deny freedoms of speech, religion, and political association to its citizens? As a member of the United Human Rights Council, why does Saudi Arabia imprison a young man who committed no crime, who only created a blog calling for freedom? Why does it flog a young man with 50 lashes for expressing an opinion? And as a member of the U United Nations Human Rights Council, why does the Saudi government impose a system of gender apartheid on its female citizens? Perhaps it's an opportunity, this membership of the United Nations Human Rights Council, for it is the time, it is time for the kingdom to live up to its promise as a member of the United Nations Human Rights Council to respect universal human rights. Hence, I respectfully and humbly take this opportunity to call on His Majesty King Salman to free Ra'if Badawi and unite him with his family. Thank you very much, Geneva Samet, for your outstanding contribution to the universal fight for freedom. Thank you. I want to thank Dr. Elham Mani for accepting this award on behalf of Raif Badawi. Uh, I don't know if we have the video of, uh, we do, we have the video of his wife. Uh, Raif Badawi's wife uh, received asylum in my home country in Canada. I'm very proud of that. And uh, she couldn't be with us here today, but she was extremely excited about this award. And she asked the family uh, representative to receive the award, but she also wanted to share a few words. And there's an English uh, transcription uh, subtitles on the bottom and uh, well let's show the video البلد الذي يحكم باسم الشريعة الإسلامية التي تقضي وبكل وضوح بقتل كل شخص يترك هذه الشريعة أيها السيدات والسادة لقد سجن زوجي رائف بدوي لمجرد أنه عبر عن رأيه وكان لتبنيه الليبرالية سببا كافيا لتعتبر محاكم التفتيش السعودية ذلك جريمة يستحق رائف بدوي لقاءها السجن لعشر سنوات والجلد الهمجي ألف جلدة محاكم التفتيش الإسلامية التي غابت مع القضاء على الفاشية الإسلامية عادت الآن في عهد راعي حوار الأذيان العاهل السعودي الذي ينفق مئات الملايين من الدولارات لأجل تلميع صورة السعودية في الخارج أيها السيدات والسادة لقد فاز رائف بدوي في شهر أكتوبر الماضي بجائزة الإنسانية من منظمة القلم الكندية وتبعها ذلك في أقل من شهر فوزه بجائزة مواطن الإنترنت من منظمة مراسلون بلا حدود وتبعها في يناير فوزه بجائزة إكهن من الجمعية العلمانية الاستكلاندية لقد تلقيت خبر فوز رائب بجائزة منظمتكم الموقرة ببالغ الفرح وعظيم الامتنان لكم ولجهودكم الحثيثة في حقوق الإنسان وأقول لكم وبكل صدق أني في دهول حتى هذه اللحظة بعد سماعي لنبأ منح جائزتكم لزوجي رائب إن لهذه الجائزة رسالة واضحة للنظام السعودي مفادها أن استمرار حبس رائف عار عليها خاصة في ظل, الح... في ظل قيادتها للحرب على الإرهاب وما يسمى بتنظيم داعش الإرهابي إنني عاجزة عن شكركم فردا فردا وكنت أتمنى أن أكون بينكم في هذا اليوم العظيم ولكن عزائي الوحيد من سيستلم الجائزة اليوم 
نيابة عن رائف هي دكتورة إلهام مانع التي أحبها ورائف أيضا سيداتي وسادتي شكرا من الأعماق I want to thank uh, Raif Badawi's wife, Ensaf Haidar, who is advocating on his behalf uh, every day uh, in Canada. And she took the time to send us that message, which we will post uh, on the internet on YouTube. Uh, before we invite the next panel, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge some of the people who have joined us here today in the audience. Uh, this morning, we had uh, a tremendous delegation of young people and we saw how young people are standing up for human rights. Raif Badawi is a young man. Yanmi Park is a young woman. Saw the girl who jumped off the truck and who is speaking out on behalf of her family, her friends, her people who are being massacred in Nigeria. And it's great to have young people here in Geneva from Institut Florimont, from Collège Condol, and from Germany uh, as they've come each year for the past few years, the Bavarian International School, the Amnesty Group, uh, led by Martin Reeves, which uh, each year brings us, we have six uh, young people from there who are uh, volunteering to help uh, run this conference. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, all of you for being here. And your youth gives us energy and it gives us hope and inspiration. <clears throat> With that, I invite our next panel on fighting oppression, defending human rights, to please come forward to the stage, Ladan 